Hallelujah. I welcome you in the name of our Lord Jesus. Blessed be his name. Hallelujah. There is no other name but the name of Jesus by which man must be saved. Hallelujah. Actually, when you look at the name, hallelujah, given to Jesus by the Father, in acknowledgement of his having uh, obeyed the will of the Father, the book of Philippians chapter 2 very clearly says, hallelujah, that he has given him a name which is above every name, and in the name of Jesus every knee will bow, every knee, without exception in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ alone is Lord. Amen. So I hope you will, while you are alive here itself, you will uh, you will bow your knees before the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. Be joined to him. Hallelujah. Let him over have lordship over your life. Amen. Actually, the words what we uh, heard in the last episode was basically from the book of Hebrews. I mean, the last words. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 Verses 32, 33 and 34. Now I'm not repeating it. But it is uh, mentioning about some people in the book of faith or the hall of faith. Hallelujah. So we also ought to emulate them. Live a life because they all went through struggles. Hallelujah. You cannot look at a man of God who never had any struggle. Hallelujah. But they all endured the struggle because the Lord was with them. Hallelujah. So the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 31 becomes so relevant here. It says that if God be for us, who can be against us? There will be things coming against, definitely. Like when you sail or when you go, you know, there's always the waters or the wind or something which is contrary. But your ability to overcome that, that is what takes you forward. Hallelujah. So continuing the same theme about standing fast in the faith. That is what this whole episodes were about. And I hope that in the coming few episodes, we will be able to conclude that. You cannot conclude, but conclude what I am sharing with you. I mean, I mean, there are limitations of time. Therefore, I would like to take you to the, another word in the book of Zachariah, chapter 8, verse 9. It says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Let your hands be strong, you who have hearing in these days. These words by the mouth of the prophets, who spoke in the day of the foundation, was laid for the hour, uh, for the house of the Lord of hosts, that the temple might be built. I'll read it once more. I mean, we'll just take it in parts. Thus says the Lord of hosts, let your hands be strong, you who have uh, been hearing in these days. So, you need to understand, when you hear the word of God, you must receive it in faith. Otherwise, as we read in the book of Hebrews chapter 4, it says, we all heard the word, but it did not profit some, because it was not mixed with faith. But we who believed ended the rest. So you need to understand, just hearing the word is not sufficient, but you have to mix it with faith so that the, faith, the, the words will become flesh and dwell amongst us and we will behold, we will behold the glory of the word coming out of, in our lives. So those, he says, let your hands be strong, you who have been hearing in these days. So today the Lord is, this is not uh, some message that the Lord spoke at the time, I mean, through uh, Zachariah. No, I mean it is definitely there But it is also for us Because the book of Hebrews says very clearly Jesus Christ, you know the word of God Is the same yesterday, today and forever So what is the Lord has given a covenant promise In the word maybe centuries ago It is still relevant Because the word is Jesus Christ himself So his covenant cannot be broken So if he said you do this and then something will happen to you That promise is there even for us like if you look at the book of John chapter 11 verse 40, it says, At the tomb of Lazarus, Jesus said to them, Mary, Martha and all the others, that if only you would believe, you would see the glory of God. Now that is not a particular word given because Lazarus was dead for four days. No, it is a general statement by Jesus of his covenant to his people. So even today, if you believe in God's word, I can assure you that you will see the glory of God. So this is what we need to, first of all, the two things. One is, when you hear the word of God, you must take it as applicable to you. It is the Lord speaking to you, maybe through when you read it, or through some preachers, or through some other media, whatever it is. It is the Lord speaking to you. So it is a personal message. And then another thing is, that message is relevant even today. It is not history, it is your story. So you can weave your story around the word of God by believing in it. Then all the blessings that the Lord has given will be yours by way of inheritance. 
Otherwise, what will happen is you will just miss out. You might be intellectually, you might be knowing all the word of God by heart. But still, it will not profit you because you did not mix it with faith. It did not benefit you in the in the spiritual realm or even even in the worldly realm because it, it was just, you know, the word of God is seed. It is a seed which you acquired and you kept it very safe in your you know cupboard. It will never bear fruit. But the seed has to be sown and it shall be sown on good ground. Because Matthew 13 when you read, you find about the parable of the sower and Jesus talks of four types of ground. One is the wayside, the other is the rocky ground, the other is the thorny ground and the other is a good ground. So the seed which is scattered or the seed that you are hearing right now if you scattered there, seed is scattered, but the words are broadcast today. You must receive it in faith, in the good ground, and then the word of God says you will bear 30, 60, and 100. But I dare say that you, if you believe fully, you will bear a hundredfold. That means you will bear, it is not numbers, it is 100% of its ability to bless you will be your inheritance. Hallelujah. Don't limit yourself to 30% of the ability of the God to bless you or 60% of the ability of God to bless you. God has no limitations. But you are the one who is bringing in the limitations by limiting the amount of faith that you are willing to mix with the word. Are you with me? When you mix only 30% faith, you will get only 30% harvest. When you mix only 60% faith, you will get only 60% harvest. But if you mix 100% faith, you will get 100% harvest. Hallelujah. Then you will be enjoying from the bounty of the Lord, from the abundance of the Lord. So he's saying that let your hands be strong. Today, I want to tell you, you know, as a believer, there will be so much of opposition coming against you. Opposition in different ways different fields from different types of people even people who are close to you and Jesus wants there will be opposition even from your own family friends yes hallelujah even Jesus' family was sort of opposing him when you read the word of God you find they never believed him hallelujah many of them hallelujah so God is saying let your hands be strong you who have been hearing in these days so today I want to tell you, in these times, today we are going through a pandemic and then, you know, different types of reports, there is a mutation of the pandemic, and so there is a no, new, no new strains for which uh, the medication has not been found yet, and there are, you know, there is an increasing, uh, uh, people are being, you know, affected by that in an increasing way. So there is so much of... Uh, uh, distress or so much of turmoil or so much of uh, uh, you know fear all over the world but God is saying let your hands be strong because I have given you words of encouragement I have given you words of healing I have given you words of deliverance so rely on that and let your hands be strong those who have been listening these days and then it says these words by the mouth of the prophets who spoke in the day they, the day the foundation was laid for the house of the Lord of hosts that the temple might be built. So these words which you have heard by the prophets, when you read the word in the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 20, verse 20, there's a beautiful saying there. It says, you believe in the Lord and you will be established. You believe as prophets and you will prosper. So today you need to understand, we need to believe God's word. And we must believe or trust in the words that are spoken by the men of God or instruments of God, I would say, who are God is using to spread the gospel or to broadcast the seed of the good news of salvation in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. Then it says, These words by the mouth of the prophets who spoke in the day the foundation was laid. There was a day, see, in everyone's life, there is one particular day where you came to your senses. Are you with me? You took a decision. For some, you are still not decided. You are still sitting on the fence. Some have rejected the word. They said, no, this is, uh, no, this is too much. It's too much for us. Like you read from the book of John chapter 6, many of the disciples, after hearing the truth, said they never, they never, they never followed Jesus after that. They left him. There are many who oppose. There are many who leave. So there are different mentalities or mindsets of the people. But there is a particular day, if you have given, if you have surrendered your life, I'm sure each one of you would be able to, re to, to remember that particular day or that particular incident or that particular word which changed your life, which brought you to realization. 
like you know when you read the word in the book of Luke chapter 15 about the prodigal son you find he was in his in the pig sty far away from his prosperous and wealthy father and he was there not even having the food to eat not even the pods they say which was given to the swine even that he did not have and in that moment god i would say that you know there was a repentance coming in his heart and there was a moment of realization a moment of realization when he found that this is not my destiny this is not my place my place is in my father's house so today i want to urge you my dear brother my dear sister the pigsty can be equated to the world where finally there will be only destruction are you with me so there is a moment of realization that your destiny is not here in this world that your destiny is with the father to spend eternity and that you can only spend that time with the father or be with the father hallelujah to spend your eternity with him when you follow jesus because jesus very clearly said in the book of john chapter 14 verse 6 that i am the way i am the truth and i am the life and no one comes to the father except through me i want to under you to underline no one and through me so there is you know jesus has made it with a, proclaimed it categorically and without a shadow of doubt that you cannot come into the presence of the father other than through jesus christ there is no other way you cannot have the you know the popular saying about all roads lead to rome i mean that is a popular saying to die are you with me all roads lead to hell but i want to tell you something that there is a narrow way which you have to choose a narrow way which is difficult which is prob- uh, the trial tribulation persecution all that but if you endure all that you will reach the presence of the father hallelujah and for that you need a guiding light the guiding light is one is the word of god because psalm 119 verse 105 says your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path again the word of god says in the book of hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of my faith so what do you have you have set your sight hallelujah or you could say you know like now people use the google map for going locate going to a particular place and then first you drop the location and then the map tells you or the voice you know google map the voice tells you that you turn left turn right so many meters turn right it guides you how to reach your destination finally when you reach there it says your destination is you have reached your destination so today you need to understand we need to drop that that location thing is heaven and we need to put jesus there as the person you want to the father there as you to where you want to reach finally finally because father is enthroned in heaven and jesus right now at the right hand of the father so once you put the location as the father and you are submitted to the directions the directions from the word of god directions from jesus himself because the book of revelation 19:13 says his name is the word of god so then you will find jesus the word of god will tell you turn left turn right turn right turn left or sometimes say you have missed the way so you turn around come go back you know so it will direct you where even if you have gone astray it will tell you how to come back into the stream so that you can reach your destination so today my dear brother my sister the word of god you can see equate it to this google google map google uh, you know destination so the most important thing is to drop that location the way you want to reach that is why god is saying these words by the mouth of the prophets who spoke in the day the foundation was laid the foundation of your life are you with me we are not talking of the foundation of the world today it is your personal life each one of you i am sure who have come into the lord to the lord uh, under the lordship of jesus i am sure you will be able to remember that one day in that particular retreat or this particular talk that i heard or this particular word when i was reading it touched me and changed me are you with me and the changes i don't mean that you have become who you are now on that day it is the decision that you took to change course that is the day you are still in the pig sty that not you sorry the prodigal son is still in the pig sty but he took a decision to go back to his father's house that is a moment of your changing course and after that i'll tell you something i believe that he was so far away when you read the word he went to a far country which means it must be really far away he must have gone 
So and you look at the situation, he was hungry, thirsty and sort of absolutely in rags. Can you imagine that son traveling all this way, he does not have money to buy food, nothing. So how would he travel back from that pigsty into his father's house? I believe that just like, hallelujah, Philip, when God wanted Philip to speak to the eunuch, God just took him and transported him into the, next to the carriage where the eunuch was traveling. When you read the Ethiopian. Hallelujah. So similarly I believe, and so after, after he baptized uh, um, the eunuch, the Ethiopian eunuch, Philip suddenly also went off. So similarly I believe, I mean this is not scripturally written, but I believe there is no other way I find how the prodigal son could have reached his father's house. I believe the minute he took the decision, yes, I am going to confess to my father. I am going to confess, Father, I have sinned before in heaven and before you. I am not worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired servants. That is a moment of realization. And that that moment, he had actually confessed his sins to God. The father was nowhere near. See, no man can forgive your sins. Only God can forgive your sins. A man can say, okay, I, you know, the debt that you owe me, I'll cancel it. But the forgiveness of sins is only by the person who paid the price for your sin. And that is Jesus Christ himself. So he confessed his sin to Jesus. And that is where the word says in the book of John, in the epistle of John, 1 John 1, 1.9, it says, If you confess your sins, he, that is Jesus, is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So Jesus, who paid the price of your sin, which is death at the cross at Calvary, he is the one who has the authority to forgive your sins because he paid the price. He has redeemed you from the sinful state where your inheritance or your just punishment was death. He has taken his, your death unto himself, his, your sin unto himself, and he has given you life, he has given you freedom, he has given you liberty to go free. That is why you are justified. Justified means just as if you have not sinned. I hope you understand, my dear brother. So, that moment of realization by the prodigal son, I believe the spirit of the living God just lifted him up and just transported him to the place, maybe the gate of his father's house. That is why father looking far off, he saw the son coming. Today, I want to tell you, my dear brother, there is a moment in our lives. The foundation was laid. The foundation was laid for the building of a temple. Hallelujah. I'm not talking of a temple with brick and mortar and cement and steel, all that. No, no. We are talking God is spirit and we are spirit beings. And whatever we do must be more in the spirit realm. Are you with me? Hallelujah. So it says, Who spoke in the day the foundation was laid, for the house of the Lord of hosts that the temple might be built. That God wanted to build a temple. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. My dear brother, my dear sister, it is so clear that God does not live in man-made temples, but he lives in living temples. And you are the living temple of the living God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What a beautiful, what a beautiful, what shall I say, God's love for each one of us. A God who created the whole universe is now taking a decision that I am going to live in you. Yes, my dear brother, my dear sister, don't be surprised. It is the word of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20, it says, Do you not know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? You have been purchased with a price, and therefore you do not belong to yourself. Therefore, you should honor God in your spirit and in your body. We have been purchased. Each one of us has been purchased, my dear. We have been redeemed. We were under the ownership of the devil because when you sin, your just reward is death. And Satan, he actually owned you because of sin. But Jesus Christ, the word of God very clearly says in, one, in the book of Peter, 1, 1 Peter 1, 18, 19, that you have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb of God. You have been purchased, that is God paid a price and bought you. That is redemption. Because you belong to someone else, you are redeemed from that state of death and God gave you life. That is why again when you read 1 Peter 2, it says that you were once in darkness but God brought you into his marvelous light. Then it says once you were not a people but now you are my people. It says once you did not receive mercy but now you have received mercy. 
So your whole destiny changed. God now owns you, my dear brother, my dear sister. This is the good news. We all were once slaves of sin. Because if you read the word in the book of Romans chapter 6, it says, you are someone's slave. Are you with me? You are the slave of one to whom you obey or you are submitted. Then it continues to say, you are either slaves of sin leading to death or you are slaves of obedience to God's word leading to righteousness. So today, there is, that is the day when you decided, I am going to change my ownership, uh, my lordship. I am going to now wanting to be under the lordship of Jesus. The minute you take that decision, my dear brother, the exchange took place. You have been redeemed by the blood. The effect of the death of Jesus at the cross at Calvary becomes effective in your life the moment you decide, I am going to give up being a slave of sin leading to death. But I am now going to become a slave of obedience to God's word. Obedience again in the book of John, the gospel says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So I am going to love my Jesus. I am going to, I'm going to take a decision that I am going to love my Jesus above all. That is the moment of time that the foundation was laid. The foundation of building God's temple in you. Hallelujah. It says that the temple might be built. We all know that the temple, you know, according to the old covenant, my dear brother, my dear sister, we need to understand the old covenant was there for a particular point of time. But the new covenant is everlasting. There is no end to the new covenant. It will never change. God's word says, I will give you an everlasting covenant. The other one was given through Moses. But the new covenant came into our lives in the person of Jesus Christ. When you read the word in the book of John chapter 1 verse 14, uh, 12. So today you need to understand one thing. That God's presence, which was there in the Ark of the Covenant, in the temple in Jerusalem, which was something made of brick, mortars, wood, whatever it is. It was a man-made temple made by Solomon according to the instructions given by God. But the minute Jesus died, the presence of God shifted from there into his new living temple. That was an object. That was an inanimate place. But now he is living. The living God is living in a living temple. And you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And that is the temple that the Lord says, Hallelujah, for the house of the Lord of hosts, that the temple might be built. So this is a prophetic word. Prophetic word by the book of Zachariah, by the mouth of Zachariah the prophet, through the Holy Spirit of course, that there is a point of time. And this foundation, my dear brother, my dear sister, was promised in Jesus Christ. Because there is no other foundation which is laid. When you read the word in the book of Corinthians, I think I will read it out to you. Because many people, hallelujah, are thinking that the foundation is something, someone else. Foundation of his church, foundation of his temple is no other, no other person but the person of Jesus Christ. In the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 11 says, For no other foundation can be can anyone lay that which is laid, which means already laid, which is Jesus Christ. So here it says, Hallelujah, we spoke in the day the foundation was laid for the house of the Lord of hosts that the temple might be built. So the, 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 the day Jesus Christ died, that was a foundation where your new temple is being built, a living temple. That is why God again says in 1 Ephesians, Ephesians 1, uh, 18, it says, We both by one spirit have access to the Father. So a new place where, you know, earlier nobody had access in the presence of Yahweh, Jehovah. Only the high priest and once a year for his sins and the sins of the people with the blood of an animal. That has changed into Jesus Christ has now become the high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. And he is now appearing. If you go read the word in the book of Hebrews chapter 6. He now appears with his own blood before the father, before the way, behind the veil. To say that now the ultimate sacrifice which has been once and for all. Hallelujah. Has been, I mean, his sacrifice has been consummated or has been, is over, is finished. And here is the blood of the new covenant, an everlasting covenant that is established in love, mercy, compassion, grace. Hallelujah. Where you and I are the beneficiaries of that. So that is the moment of time. The foundation was laid. That foundation is laid and you can build upon it in whichever way you want. Hallelujah. I want to tell you something. You know, it will be very interesting. When you continue to read, it says, 
For that is uh, one Guru. This three eleven we read earlier. I'll read once more. For no other foundation can anyone lay that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and straw, each one's work will become clear. For the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone work, anyone's work which has been built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. So, I mean, it is a, it, these are words which probably you can have a, a few episodes on that. But what I am just trying to impress upon you is, there is a foundation that is laid. Now it is for us to build on that. You can build with things which are valuable, which will not be destroyed by fire. Or you can build with like, you know, stone, um, brick and all that. Or you can build, I am not talking, you please understand the concept only. We are not going back once again into a brick and mortar temple. It is only talking of things which are enduring, precious. Or you can put with something which does not endure, the fire. The fire will test both. So this is what we need to build on the foundation. The foundation is the same. It is given for you to build. You can build upon that foundation a beautiful temple for the Lord. Or a, you know, like the band built a house on, a, a, you know, on sand and thing. And it is something very temporary. And the fire, on, there it is the, um, the, the wind and the storm, waters and all came. There was a destruction. So you, we have to build something which will endure the fire. And that is why you need to understand, God is saying that the foundation was laid for the house of the Lord of hosts that the temple might be built. So I told you earlier, my dear brother, my dear sir, we need to understand that the presence of God is no longer in a man-made temple, but it is in the living temples. And you are the living temple of the living God. Hallelujah. Because God is spirit and we are also spirit. When you read again the book of Peter, everything, it sort of talks of you have been built up together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. Book of Ephesians says that. You have been built up. I think I'll just read that portion before we wind up this episode. The book of Ephesians very clearly says that you are the temple. You are being built up into a temple for the living place of God. Hallelujah. It is like this. The book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 22 says, um, In whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. So your temple is in the spirit realm. God is spirit. You are spirit. God wants to dwell in the spiritual temple that you are. Hallelujah. So today, prepare yourself, my dear brother, my dear sister, to house the presence of the Lord. He will come into your life. We will continue this aspect in the next talk and next episode. And do please join us. And thank you for watching. And God bless. Amen. Amen.